Okay, on to part two, which is how do I read these things once I've got them, okay? And that's what we're going to cover in this video. Uh, one thing before I get started is this. Uh, you may find at one point in your research that you're somewhere other than your bookshelf. And you might say, okay, I see all this. What do I, I want to get back to the books that I've already checked out. This is the, the icon you want to look for all the time, your account icon. Once you click on that, you can get back to your bookshelf. So I wanted to ha emphasize that right at the get-go, that look for account and it gets you back here. Okay, the best way to read these titles is to read them in your browser. You don't have to download any extra software, you don't have to do anything special. All you got to do is click the read button and it opens up within your browser. And you're used to doing stuff in your browser already a lot of the time anyway, so why not? Okay, and they take me to the last page I was reading before I closed this tab um, previously. Okay, so that's that's neat. So this is where I left off. This is where I'm going to start. Okay, and navigation is pretty straightforward. You click to the uh, right to go forward. You click to the left to go back. Um, some other things that you may not be aware of, and I'm going to highlight it. I don't use it, but I just want you to know in case you do accidentally click in the middle of the book and <gasps> something pops up. What's that? This will actually give you statistics about the book. Um, I guess it's handy if you've been looking at a number of different treatises and you're trying to figure out which one you were looking at when you found what you were interested in. I don't use it all that much. It also has a link to a tutorial about how to navigate through the book. That's useful, but you know you don't have to click on it. The one thing that is nice is what's called Seek. And if you click anywhere sort of to the to the toward the bottom of the page, you get the slider bar, which pops up, which is neat because you can just sort of rip through the, the the volume quickly that way. Okay, and then once you're you're where you want to be, you're fine. Um, other things to pay attention to: if you want to highlight a sentence or a section or a paragraph, or whatever, you click and hold. Click and hold. Sorry, I'm not going to bother going back to that page. Click and hold, and the text turns red. Let me do that again. Um, click and hold, and then you can drag any amount of it. It doesn't have to be the whole thing. Um, define here, which is grayed out, is grayed out because I have more than one word. If it's one word, they'll, they'll give you a link to dictionary.com, which I don't think is the greatest thing. I don't really care too much about it, but highlight is very useful because I can highlight it in color whatever color of that and I can even leave a note such as oh I don't know this is a note yay okay and so you can leave little annotations you can even bookmark the page this bookmark is sort of grayed out or ghosted and now it's active and when you click on notes and bookmarks there they are this is what I just did okay and so you can go back every one of these is a hyperlink you can go back to um, any one of your previous ones right and if you click on it, you know, there's your note. So this is excellent, and this is something you want to take advantage of. And what's neat about this is these are preserved. So let's say you do this in this volume for a while, and then you check the volume back in because you're done with it. And then you want to go back to it later on and, and check the volume out again and look at your notes and annotations. They will be preserved based on your login. L LexisNexis preserves them based on your Jenkins login, and they can resurrect them for you so you can see what you annotated the volume with. So that's a nice feature, and it's, it's quite useful. Okay. Now, one other thing that I want to talk to you about uh, on this page is this download button. This allows you to download the, the, the text of the volume uh, in sort of like airplane mode. You don't have internet access and you want to be able to look at this book offline. You click the download button and it downloads the text, except it doesn't. It really what it does is it, 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 it gives you a cached copy of the book in your browser. Okay, So it's not like you downloaded a PDF, it's just a cached copy of the book. And if you go through and add annotations or highlights or whatever while you're in offline mode and then you go back online and do some other stuff and then close the tab, those offline edits that you made are lost. Okay, So airplane mode is good if you just want to read the book or if you want to take notes on some other device. But if you add notes to this volume while you're in airplane mode 
and then you close the tab, they're not preserved. So I want you to be aware of that, and you're really not downloading a PDF of this volume as you would probably think it would it would be based on the download button. You're basically getting a cached copy of it. So I want to be clear about that, just so you don't have any oopsies. It would be really a shame if you spent a three-hour flight annotating this book offline, and then you lost all that stuff once you cl close the tab because it wasn't preserved. Okay, so it, I mean, I saw that happen to me the first time, and I, I was quite surprised by that. So just be aware of that. The last thing that I do want to mention to you uh, about this page is there is a search feature. It's similar to Control F in o or Command F, depending on what kind of computer you have. You're probably used to it. You type in, for example, PDF or whatever it is that you're interested in, and you know you find uh, the words that you're you're looking for. So that's pretty straightforward as well. So most of this is pretty intuitive. The only things that aren't real intuitive is the click and hold thing. Um, but once you get the hang of that, it's pretty straightforward. So this is the best way to deal with these titles is to read these volumes within the browser, right? By clicking on this blue button, read in your browser. Okay. Now in the next part of the video, part three, we're going to talk about that issue of downloading and what are your options if you want to read this on some other device.